Now, I already mauled Marvel when I started my Comic Crash 2 series back in, what, 2020? So I figured, fuck it. It's only been, what, three entire years? Why not knock out a sequel or several? Hey, fuck you! I'm still quicker on the draw than James Cameron, and I won't even make you watch a Prego Cat Girl tail fuck a tree. Don't worry, Fuentes, you'll get over it. Between a blizzard of bad news and more fiscal fuckery than MC Hammer's bank account, it ain't exactly a trade secret that DC Comics is weathering the waters of the rip-roaring Biden economy about as well as Ted Kennedy at the helm of the Costa Concordia. But while Marvel's gone from struggles to struggle sessions, it's all the more dire for DC, as the house that Batman built and Superman saved has damn near died on no less than five fucking occasions, ostensibly the oldest, more established of the major American comic companies. In truth, DC's difficulties began early and inevitably re-emerge every other damn decade or so. In 1967, while sucking hind sales tit thanks to the emergence of Marvel, DC's parent company, Kinney Publications, was swallowed whole by Warner, and DC's fortunes have been goddamn grafted to the WB ever since. Sometimes to their benefit, as with the launch of the original Superman and Batman movies in the 70s and 80s respectively, and others to their eternal eternal torment, as with the AOL Time Warner murder merger in the early 2000s, which brings us to the depression du jour. In case the recent slate of DC film releases hadn't set your cognitive signal flares off firing, the news out of the comic front is equally apocalyptic. DC is dying. And it's obvious even to the unconnected comic fan. Hell, even a once-over of their Wikipedia page confirms the last seven major stories in the company's recent history are an interminable procession of brutally bad news. Beginning with Dan DiDio's donging in February of 2020, which was described in the trades as a... <clears throat> restructuring, though industry insiders quietly confirm was a 45 caliber shit canning to the more recent Warner Discovery dick flattening, a relationship which has seen the parent company after a decades long grace period at long last checking their fucking receipts and carving off the company's dead weight as needed. About 200 tons of it evidently, as in August of 2020, roughly two thirds of DC Comics as a company were promoted to the poorhouse. You know shit's gone pear shaped faster than a Latina after age 30, when in July of 2019, prior to the pandemic, DC were already shipping the lowest number of monthly retail titles in decades. In case that didn't hang a great big bow on DC's rapidly collapsing sales boner, around the same period, Rob the Knob Liefeld took a pause from not drawing fucking feet to proclaim, and I quote, I ain't never seen a company in as much disarray as DC Comics. Thank God they have been. Batman to act as their Tylenol, aspirin, and laughing gas. More Batman will fix it. And folks, I never thought I'd say this, but Rob Liefeld is as right as his anatomy is wrong. Understand this. Much of the American comic and pulp publication field was founded as a legitimate front for the mob, and witnessing their tendency toward hiring fellow talentless travelers while spurning and even blacklisting anyone with the wrong letter on their voter registration card confirms they still very much operate by a modern, more vaginally inclined variant of the Omerta code, even today. And this ain't some modern contrivance either. Thanks to pusillanimous pinko horseshit like Green Lantern, Green Arrow, or Denny O'Neill's insulting iteration of the question as early as the 70s and 80s, not to mention Alan Moore's monument to undeserved hype, The Watchmen, DC have been ground zero for commie chiclet brains for decades. Hell, in the more recent past, while Marvel were dipping their toes in with a gay colossus character in Ultimate X-Men, the primary pushers of identity politics in American comics as early as 05 were DC, with Dan DiDio boldly proclaiming the company's new lipstick lesbian Batwoman in 52 was little more than a propagandist publicity stunt, one which worked, by the way, and a decade and change later, her Home Depot shopper's card remains her sole defining character trait. Never mind what they did to Renee Montoya, who after multiple heterosexual relationships, at least one engagement to a man, and a long-running unrequited crush on Harvey Bullock, suffered a sapphic re 
reimagining by the DC diversity police because everyone knows the least defensive stereotype in the world is the idea that the only reason a woman would possibly want to become a police officer is if she's also a WNBA season ticket holder. Though that still beats what they've done to Nightwing, who after a few running gags about his glutes has since been reduced to a sentient pair of butt cheeks for thirsty Moe's to hand jive to. You mark my words, inside of a year, Detective Comics is gonna drop a Dick Grayson gaping variant. Even the new 52 shoved that shit clean down our collective esophagus as it paused for multiple pointless scissor sessions with a spontaneously gay Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, which wouldn't have been half as creepy if their platonic relationship hadn't started in a fucking children's cartoon. Hell, half the sexy supervillains in Batman's rogues gallery have given up a life of crime and become lady golfers. Meanwhile, Connor Kent's getting cornholed by a Starbucks barista, and in the latest issue of Throbbin, Tim Drake and his steady fella just won the Stanley Cup in tonsil hockey. Anyone else nostalgic for a time when we knew next to nothing about where a superhero holstered his crank? But if the print business were their only issue, the DC brand could still theoretically print some pesos at the box office. Unfortunately for them, that plan's got about as well as anything else at the w -Betus. I need you to take a beat, sink into your seating arrangement, and really process that 20, Titty twisting years into the spandex cinema trend, DC are still groping in the dark like Biden in a blackout. Folks, it is officially time to admit it out loud. The superhero cinema trend is ready to ride off into the sunset without DC Comics once finding a solitary fucking way to capitalize on it. The seismic scope of that sheer mountain flattening failure cannot conceivably be overemphasized. It'd be like if a chain smokers convention came to town and Philip Morris didn't sell a single cigarette. Rolling fields of fuck. What a Failure! Sure, they've had some standouts, virtually all of which are in some way anchored to their only bankable character, Batman. Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy was great up until it fucking became one, but that shit so far in the rearview mirror, the van of peace couldn't even back over it. Then there was Joker, the most blinding box office bonanza in years that the studio fought tooth and claw to prevent from being filmed. And really, that's the raison dipfuck of latter-day DC. All the the shit they didn't think would do a damn thing and thus barely fucking promoted became a success they couldn't conceive in their wildest mescaline hallucinations. While the fanboy wank fuel they wanted to work, from Wonder Woman 84 to Justice League to Shazam, either underperformed or took a bigger shit than Amber Heard at Chipotle. It probably wouldn't sting so hard if anything the fuck else the WB had been cranking out were worth a damn, but with Blade Runner 2049 turning into the only cult film without a cult, and the high Hobbit proving that Peter Jackson lost the ability to make trilogies once his chin stopped being one, the pressure's been on for DC to do something, fucking anything worth a fraction of a scintilla of a shit at the cinema. And that pressure, I believe, has been Warner's worst enemy. As demand for results mounts and the long shadow of Discovery Warner sprawls into view, the urgency gives way to panic, gives way to outright apoplexy. And really, that's James Gunn's new DCEU slate in a nut hammock. A frantic, fumbling series of reboots, the third of its kind in 15 fucking years, might I add, to desperately position the DC film brand squarely beneath the rapidly drying Superman money tit before the whole fucking cow becomes a baseball glove. And while many express amazement at Warner CEO David Zaslav cutting damn near to the bone, carving much of the eye-rolling wokery DC originally pioneered in the process, I can only ask, what took so fucking long? Warner were always going to be the first of these major corporations that went broke, then went woke, which eventually arrived at the end phase I've alluded to in prior rants. Either they fucking reform, or ultimately, croak! And the whys and wherefores are simpler than DC dialogue. Warner were damn near death when other comic film companies weren't. How do you suppose they're doing now that the average citizen needs a bank loan to make a fucking omelet? I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. So, tell me about the rabbits. Can you be more threatening? Tell me about the rabbits. <laughs>